Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a quick walkthrough video of our new library, Art of the Alto, which is an awesome alto saxophone library in the style of all of our other new standard instruments. So let's just jump in real quick and um, talk about some of this stuff. If you have any of our other libraries, you're going to know this. But there's a few new things, and for those who haven't seen it before, I'll just kind of talk through it real quick. So you've got, um, here's the main instrument. Um, we've got our real-time smart delay control here. Um, you know, this is sort of the heart of the way our libraries work. So you have your real-time mode, which I'm just playing in real time. And then you've got smart delay. So if I turn this on and play the same thing, it'll delay the playback. And it takes into account all these different things about how you played and what the intervals are and all this stuff. And it'll play back from a huge pool of samples so so you hear the difference so you can get the tone of it from the real time you can kind of hear how it sounds but in smart delay you can hear it's like night and day okay so that we'll talk more about that in a bit but that's the big part of our instruments. So then you got your performance view here, um, mod wheel versus key velocity dynamics. I suggest you keep it on mod wheel, um, but some people just can't, don't want to. <laughs> so you get, we have the option. Um, velocity staccato trigger means if you hit it really hard, it plays a staccato sample instead of a... So... Right. Vibrato, so the modulation vibrato, which is like controlled back here, which is a modulation based um, vibrato, which sounds really, really good. And then you have the real vibrato, which means this is what they actually played. So you know, you don't have any control over the real vibrato. That's just, it is what they played. And mod wheel, you can control the speed and the amount and how long it waits and all kinds of things. So that's that. <clears throat> Hard velocity equals long scoop. This has to do with um, the scoop key switch down here on B flat. If you hit it really hard, it'll do like a very intense big scoop. We can maybe show that later. So that's that. You have your articulation view down here. So you can see changing, you get all these articulations here. We'll go through them. So we got legato, two amounts of staccato. So staccato and staccatissimo. You have tongued, uh, forte pianos, half step trill, whole step trill. In the brass instruments, this G is a shake, which saxophones don't do. So that's why this one is grayed out. So that way they match all the other libraries. So you have falls, which there's tons of. I'll show you how. Long falls, scoops, doits, flops, rips, glisses and runs, half step bends, crescendo and hairpins. And also you can combine, you can like play a crescendo and a hairpin together. <clears throat> um, we can talk more about that. So that's the uh, that's the articulations. Um, we in this library we added. This is the first time we've done this. We added expression control. So before you you know you had your mod wheel control, which is dynamics, but now there's a another layer of volume control, which I was against for a long time but I've come around <laughs> um, yeah I, I, when I was making the demo of the uh, Bernard Herman taxi driver thing if you heard that I realized I did need another layer of shaping so um, so that's so that's nice so it's automatically um, CC 11 controls this or you can assign a different one if you want something different um, so that's nice uh, also I should mention you can right click I forgot to mention that you can right click the smart delay thing if you have a knob and you want to use that to turn it on and off. Some people wanted to do that, so I have added that. Uh, so that's the main page. Then we have the sound menu, which is really just your mic positions 
and the reverb. So, so just a kind of a nice basic reverb. You have your close mic. We have tape, which is all the samples from the close mic um, run to one inch tape and back. So actually tape, not like a emulation or something. One little note about this: when you, if you have both of these on at the same time, so realizing that this is, it's almost always the same mic. Um, go into tape. So if you combine these together, sometimes you'll get phasing. And it's not on every note, but but the tape, you got to realize the tape is very slowly, there's a little wow and flutter in the tape where it's it's bending the pitch. I mean, you can't tell it is, but it's the slowing down and speeding up in tiny amounts, enough so that they will get out of phase with each other. So I don't suggest having these on together at the same time. It's kind of like one or the other, but um, that's just a note about that. Just I've had a few people mention that. For some reason in the alto, it's a little more noticeable than in Atomic Big Band. I don't know why, but <clears throat> anyway, so there's phasing. If you have these on, you can pan uh, you know, things. Um, you got your room mic, which is really, really great. Um, again, you know, I've said this a, mi a million times, but especially for the for the upper dynamics, um, for saxophones too, hearing that. There's just something about. Feeling that room gives it just a little more edge. And then you have this bleed. This is not actually a mic position. This is like a convolution that we use that's based, we have it on all of our libraries, which is really cool. Um, and I always suggest people use it. They should use it more. But um, having it on... <laughs> can you hear it's a little kind of wild sounding by itself when nothing else is playing but if you pan it I find that a lot of times I'll have it like pan basically the idea is like imagine the saxophone bleeding into someone else's mic in the studio um, there's another horn player or there's the drummer or whatever bass player um, so it gives a little kind of spatial there's like a spatial magic thing that happens and you don't have to put much but just a little bit Often panning it to maybe where another instrument is can be really, you'll feel like, oh wow, that really does something to the spatial character. Sorry, I'm taking too long. Uh, so then we have long scoop speed. So this is for that, when you hit the, I gotta turn that back on. So when you hit the, so that's an example, right? So a really big scoop because I hit the key hard. Now you kind of want to be able to adjust how fast it goes. So like if I turned it up. So that sped it up quite a bit and then you could slow it down even with this will probably sound insane. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit ridiculous, but anyway, so that it depends on the tune and the speed of your of your track. You you want to adjust this a little bit probably to get it to feel right. Um, <clears throat> so in real time, this is the controls you have. Um, this is your smart delay key switch. Um, I like it at 96, which is just this top C here. Um, but you can move it somewhere else if you want. Um, Legato speed is basically, you know, these are your legato c controls. How so? How long it fades in and out, and how fast it is. Um, you can. I don't really mess with these that much. They sound. They usually sound good wherever they're like. If, if you command click them, they'll be kind of in the right spot. Um, but if you find that it's a little too jumpy, you could slow it down, and like it'll be a little more smooth. Okay, and then vibrato controls. So this is for if we're on mod wheel vibrato, which we are, we can adjust how long it waits. So that started right away. Right, and I have the amount turned way up. So you can turn the speed and the amount way up. That's probably only for effect. Often you're going to want a little weight though. This is for real time. 
but you know, somewhere in here. That's really natural. I also find that if the speed is low, the amount can be high and vice versa. If the speed is high, the amount can be low. Like that doesn't sound fake. If you turn them both all the way up, it sounds a little ridiculous, but they can be kind of inverse. That's kind of a cool sound. So speed slow and amount way up. So that's something you can play with. You can control that. In real time, a few things change here. So you have what's this swing accent, which is really cool. It's kind of hard to explain, but it basically does all kinds of things with accenting certain notes in a phrase and de-emphasizing certain notes. Um, the, if you have it off, it generally plays things pretty flat and doesn't really lay into certain notes. Um, and if you have it on, it, it and it says swings, but it isn't really just for jazz. Pop music, too. If I was doing more of a classical thing, I would definitely turn this off. And it would be much more naturally smooth. All the dynamics would stay the same. But this kind of, it'll hit certain notes a little harder, hit certain notes softer. It's kind of a magic button. Um, <clears throat> and then in, in Smart Delay, your vibrato, we have this thing called terminal vibrato. So you see this thing turns off. So you can't control how much it weights anymore. It does terminal vibrato, which is the way players actually really play, which is they play a long note and they kind of put the vibrato in as they're approaching the last, the next note. So da dee dee, they'll do a little little shake before they move to the next note so you can kind of choose how how early in the note you want it to start this is kind of a percentage this is like it'll come in at the very last second and this will base it'll play from the beginning so um somewhere around here usually sounds really good this is kind of my vibe but you can um find what you like okay so Let's play something in. I think the last part here will be, I'll just play a phrase in and uh, I can just go through the articulations hopefully pretty quickly and um, show you how they how they work. Um, this is kind of how I do it. I usually just play something in, put it in Smart Delay and tweak from there. So let's try something. <laughs> So I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it in real time first. So it leaves a little something to be desired in real time because saxophones are hard to sample like this, which is the whole reason why we do smart delay in the first place. So um, I'll play it in in real time and then we'll switch it over and give it a listen. So let's now move it over to Smart Delay. Also, this little note here, it comes up and tells you, for added realize, realism, for added realism, engage Smart Delay and go to your DAW, select the instrument's MIDI region and move it four beats to the left. The script will analyze your playing and select the appropriate samples and delay them four beats. Because we aren't, we don't have any other tracks in here. We had drums and bass and whatever else we wanted. We would need to move. So if we recorded it here, we would need to move it back but it doesn't really matter right now because we don't have any other instruments in there um also you can say don't remind me and it won't remind you again so let's just listen to it actually first thing i'll do is um i'll just quantize it for our, all of our sakes and then another thing i like to do is logic has this really good keys um shortcut shift and backslash makes things legato so it basically makes the note as long as it can be which i have a lot of repeated notes a lot of repeated notes in this phrase and that really makes a huge difference so let's just give that a listen
Okay, nice. So I'm going to play this short. Okay, so just a couple things to notice. Um, how good the the repeated notes are. So they're not all the same sample, and they're actually playing from recordings of notes being played back to back, repeated notes. Let's hear the dynamics. So um, I'll um, let's put in mod wheel and make sure. Yes, we're on mod wheel. So I'll just turn it way down. Let's hear what it is. Super quiet. Here at the top dynamic. Nice. So, um, one thing to notice is that we, you know, we didn't put a key switch because it assumes you're playing legato, but if you can hear. There's no key switches here, but it's already triggering staccato samples. So it's triggering all the right samples. It just knows, you know, it knows that there's nothing after it. If you if you were to stretch it, it would play it long in legato. Right. So so a lot of times you 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 don't have to do any key switches. I put the legato in, and like that's. Even just that performance is plenty fine for, for most things. Um, we can get better though. Um, but yeah, so even for just regular old staccatos, uh, you don't you don't need to do it. And it chooses the correct ones based on the tempo. So you can feel they feel really nice and fat quarter notes based on it. I'll put the click in so we can feel the groove. Um, Right, so they're nice and kind of meaty, and um, we'll have some more options there with with some of the other articulations. Um, um, okay, so first let's yeah let's just check out some short notes. So that spot I was talking about. So if we listen to this, so this is just on the legato, right? And so then we could go to staccato. So they're all different. Those are all different recordings, actually, but um, more or less the same length. Often the staccato is going to be the same, but you have more round robins. So if you were to have a bunch of repeated notes in a row, like if I was going to do it here, I would definitely do. I wouldn't really want this staccato. Probably it's going to sound a little funny, but you can hear that it's doing round robins. Right. Da, 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 da. So that's all different. Um, if we wanted it a little shorter. Let's say we wanted it shorter. So you can hear that's a little more peck, pecky kind of short sound. So you could play with that. So that gives you some different note length options for short notes. Oh yeah, okay, so let's talk about tongued. So this is an interesting articulation. So if we go maybe to this phrase and we put, um, not there. This E flat is tongued. So let's listen to it without it real quick. Let's just have it be legato. Check out this phrase. So that has a certain quality to it. If we make this tongued, you'll hear each note just gets a little bit more edge to it. Da, da, da. Right, every note is getting a little more something. Here's legato again. Right, much. It's just yeah, it's more legato. This and then this is going to just be more, a little bit more tongue on each on each note. So that can be really useful. It's sort of a medium between legato and staccato, where the notes are long, and they're almost connected, but there's a tiny bit of daylight between each note, and there's a little more of a start to the note. So that's tongued. 
Okay, Forte Pianos. Maybe we'll try it here too. So these these work obviously better on more long notes. So this E key switch is Forte Piano. So if it went D D D D da ba D D, so let's kind of sting this long note. Let's hear it. Right. If it didn't have that and it was just long, you'll hear it's just kind of a softer. Anytime you're jumping to a note or leaping to a note or maybe after a bunch of other short notes, a tongue can be really nice. Actually, it might be good on this one too. So this note getting a tongued, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of just hit this beat two and the and of four a little more. Feel it? It's just like a little accent. So it, it can be really useful and I, I use it all the time. So if you're not using it, if you have our libraries and you're not using the Forte Piano, use it more. <laughs> Anytime you have a long note following a bunch of eighth notes or you leap to a note, it's going to just add that little something. It takes a little bit of that midiness out. Um, so those are cool. Um, some trills. So maybe on the last note, this again works more, more better on long notes. So this key switch here, so staccato, yeah, so you got half step trills on F and whole step trills on F sharp. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have that there, but that's what the, the trills sound like. Okay, that's the thing. Okay, falls. Maybe... Oh, the trill is still there. Um, here, so let's see. So we put a fall on this. So this will give us our kind of basic fall to nothing. And then one thing about these falls is that when they're turned up, so the highest velocity is going to give you a, a more of a fingered, longer fall, and the lower velocity will give you um, kind of a lip fall. So check this out. So here it is with the high dynamic. And then here if we take this volume and turn it down, you'll hear the difference. Right, so it's just a little more subtle. The other thing we can do is, um, if we get rid of this, we could do what what we call an inner fall. The way we think of it is an inner fall. So this is a fall that doesn't go to nothing; it goes to another note. So if I stretch this note, da, 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 it'll play a long note and fall into this. Right, so it's connected. So that's that's really useful um, to be able to have. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that, but that that's a cool option. Um, now scoops. Uh, so again, there's tons of scoops. So the kind of most basic one is like maybe on this first note of the short stuff. So if we go from here. Right, so do it, da, da, da. so that's just a scoop to a short note, and then you can put a scoop um, in a beginning of a phrase like this. So, so this is this note is going somewhere else, right? It's the beginning of a phrase, but you can do a little scoop on this with that same key switch. So it'll be a totally different sample than what we just heard, but it'll connect those two really nicely. So check it out. Right. So almost just like a little grace note. Um, and 
you kind of don't know what you're going to get. There's some degree of that um, because these players are playing this stuff in real time. You know, they're just, they have it on the chart and they play it. And so they're not all the same and there's a looseness to it, um, which we love, you know, and we kind of think of it in the same way we think of when we hire a real player for a session. You know, they're going to basically play what you ask, you know, scoop there, crescendo here, loud here, quiet here, fall here. But it's, you know, you can't control every little thing. And so we, what we lose a little bit in total control, we gain in vibe and realism and all the things that we think are important. So, yeah, also it might be nice in like in the middle of I mean, that was subtle, but it's... <laughs> There's a little something there. Da -da 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 -da, right? So you can try it out, you know, and just audition it in different spots, and you'll find kind of cool little things. Um, long falls would be, like, at the end of the tune. This is where I always do it. This is, like, almost, like, ridiculous. So this A is the long fall key switch. So at the end of a song, right, kind of over the top, um, wouldn't use it that often. <laughs> Don't use it too much, it'll start to sound like MIDI. Uh, similarly, the doit, which is a kind of another, so this is this B key switch, um, similar kind of vibe, but the reverse. Right, so ascending up. Flop is next. Now these are these are funny and they're kind of specific where they work, but maybe here, like it's just basically a, it's like a run but from uh, from above. So let's see if it sounds good on this C sharp here. Um, we'll go from. Let's just listen to it on this note. <laughs> Yeah, right. Doesn't always work. I probably wouldn't use it in that exact spot, but it's that's the sound. Okay. Similar to a scoop, this rips. So a rip. Maybe that same spot where we put it on the scoop here earlier. Let's try it here. Maybe we'll do a short note. So it'll do a rip. So you can hear it's just like a little and it's going to be different on every time, you know. Some sometimes it'll do a lot of notes, sometimes it'll be just a few. So that's a cool that's a cool thing. It's similar to to the next one which is glisses. Now so maybe we'll so in the same spot here. So we'll let's get rid of this note and just make a long note. They tend to work better with space and long notes. So we have a little bit of distance here. I think it'll sound okay. So basically you play the note, you play the gliss key switch, which is D in between that and the next note. And what you'll really notice, we'll put the click on, is that the gliss will start wherever it needs to start for this note to land where it needs to land on the end of two. So you don't have to, the days of nudging around where your gliss starts so you can make it land where you want are over. You just say play a gliss and it'll play this note. It'll start the gliss when it needs to start in order to go rah. No, we don't want that. We want legato. So that was kind of, it's probably not great in that spot, but um, maybe even maybe even we get rid of this and we do it here. I wonder what that sounds like. That was cooler. So, but the important thing is, well, one of the important things is that you don't have to adjust where the, your arrival note is. So that's one version of glisses. Now the other version is, you can see here when you hit this key switch, it says gliss slash runs. So run to me 
is like a rip. It's very similar, but not exactly the same. So this this comes into play at the beginning of a phrase. So this is just going to play a little something, a little gliss into the first note. Yeah, in this case, I'd probably make it on the downbeat. Feels better, swings better. But again, you don't have to nudge this around. It plays a gliss. It starts it because of smart delay. It has time to think, and so it says, "Okay, I got to start the gliss here in order for it to land there." So that's that. Oh yeah, but I like that rhythm. Okay, so that's runs. Half step bend is the E flat here. Yes. I think it'll work here. It's not exactly the same notes, right? But, but yeah, you can hear what it does. It gives a little bend. Bend down and back up. This probably will work pretty good in this spot. Yeah, da da. Right? So that's kind of cool. Um, you can also, the little sort of hack, you can use these as falls sometimes if you don't like the way a fall sounds because it gives you a bend. So, yeah. And you can kind of, there's a sometimes it sounds good. Um, I'm going to undo that. Although, that's kind of cool actually. Let's leave that. Crescendo hairpins, the last two. Sorry, word, I know it took too long. I said I wasn't going to. Maybe here, I think they work better on long notes, but maybe we have enough time on this note. Let's hear what it sounds like. You can hear it. Those are really useful, and a hairpin is it goes up and down, so you can see the graphic. Hairpin goes up and back down, crescendo just goes up I don't think in this well I could use it on this note cool so that's so that's that um only other thing I was going to show was the expression that we added so I might use it I would use it in a, in a more maybe more ballad kind of tune um more often but let's go back to that silly trill Sorry if you can hear someone sawing something. Um, so then, yeah, just regular expression. We could put a little fade on this trill. Right, so you can see the, the thing goes when it's supposed to, four beats later. Right. So that, you can use that to kind of shape things. Sometimes the crescendos or the hairpins get too loud and you can maybe, you know, you can duck them a little bit. Just gives you a little bit more options for that. Um, that's basically Art of the Alto. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who's already picked it up. Yeah, thanks again. See you next time.